1945. Wenige Monate vor dem Ende des Krieges kommen Stalin, Roosevelt und Churchill in Yalta zusammen, um Verabredungen darüber zu treffen, wie Deutschland aufgeteilt werden soll. Die künftigen Grenzlinien werden bereits hier gezogen. Thüringen wird den Sowjets zugeschlagen. Die auf Jena vorrückenden Amerikaner wissen also, dass sie nicht viel Zeit haben werden, ihre Interessen dort durchzusetzen. Ich konnte mit äh, aufgehender Sonne beobachten, dass äh, amerikanische Truppen aufgerückt waren mit Panzern und Infanterieverbänden im Mühetal. Kommt von Weimar als von Westen. a very bitter cup that Germany had to drink after the war and it's important that you watch all of these videos the entire set of videos um, of at the moment they're, they're up to I think video number 12 the entire series of videos is a required course if you want to understand the development of humanity because <clears throat> One has to understand the propaganda apparatus that's been used and how people in the older generations didn't really have access to the kind of information that we have access to today with the internet. And so the amount of study that could be done was fairly limited. And I can remember what my parents fought in the Second World War and they were firmly convinced that they were fighting a good fight to help the people of Germany escape the claws of a terrible man. Okay. Now, I don't know about you, but it's necessary to look at this period of history and decide who the bad guys were and who the good guys were. Because, you know, unless we do this, we're just going to be horrified, if you like, by what happens to us in this world, because we can see with the fake news and everything that's gone on in the last few years, we can see the true nature of these people who like to call themselves good, but who are actually evil. Now, I'm going to read you something, and I'm going to ask you to guess who said the words. Okay, here goes. <clears throat> now I want to read something to you. <clears throat> you can guess who it is who wrote these words. Awful developments lie ahead just beyond our fingertips in the breathing of human beings and the shaping of human nature. It used to be said, though you have taught the dog more tricks, you cannot alter the breed of the dog. But that is no longer true. A few years ago, was surprised by a play called Rossum's Universal Robots. The production of such beings may well be possible within 50 years. They will not be made but grown under glass. There seems little doubt that it will be possible to carry out in artificial surroundings the entire cycle which leads to the birth of a child. Interference with the mental development of such beings expert suggestions and treatment in the earlier years would produce being specialized to thought or toil. Thought or toil, specialization, do you toil, do you think? The production of creatures, for instance, which have admirable physical development with their mental endowment stunted in particular directions is almost within the range of human power. A being might be produced capable of tending a machine, but without other ambitions. <clears throat> now, some of you might be thinking that Adolf Hitler said those words. And even some of you might be thinking, that, that was that terrible man, Putin, who said those words. And I think all of you will be surprised to learn that those were the words of Winston 
church are. Think about that. <clears throat> now you'll notice in the last picture the man sitting in the middle between Stalin on the one side and Churchill on the other. The left and the right, if you like. <laughs> the right-hand man and the left-hand man. <clears throat> the left hand of darkness, the right hand of light, or so they say. But the one in the middle is the one that runs it all. Okay. So, you'll notice he looks a bit worried and after returning from the Yalta Congress, which is where the picture was taken, he died shortly thereafter. And it was before the atomic bomb was dropped. So this was Roosevelt. Uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt did not, was not responsible for dropping the bomb, but he was responsible for creating the program that created the atomic bomb. Yet he was... Um, superseded by or succeeded by his 2IC um, Truman, Harry Truman and Truman was responsible for a lot of bad stuff that happened after the war and <clears throat> Truman created the CIA and the NSA and a lot of the intelligence agencies and um, the, the United Nations was formulated under Truman and the important thing that was formulated under Truman was the Marshall Plan. Now supposedly the Marshall Plan was to give aid to Europe to rebuild it after the war but this wasn't the case at all because the Marshall Plan was based on the new thesis that had been put out by an economic theorist and so what the Marshall Plan called for was that instead of American government giving aid to Europe, what they did was the American government bought shares in American businesses, which then created new businesses using that money to create businesses in the post-war European sphere so that the Americans could dominate the global exchange of goods and services. Because what they were worried about was that there was going to be a breakdown between the... Hang on, I have to get the exact words for this. I'll read it to you from my other seat. And it says, The modern system of the division of labour upon which the exchange of products is based is in danger of breaking down. This is Marshall's speech, George Marshall. Okay, the division of labor, <clears throat> the system of the division of labor is in danger of breaking down. Now the division of labor is that you divide the, the people in the world into those who serve and those who eat. And that's the same as those who toil and labor and those who order the others to do what they do on their behalf. The ones that control everything and the others who have to do the work. That is the division of labor. And they were frightened that communism was coming and was within danger. Socialism and communism would endanger the division of labor. And so <clears throat> the Marshall Plan was designed to strengthen the division of labor, the existing system, and make sure that that was reintroduced into Europe and also, of course, into Japan and various other places. And so the Marshall Plan was a unique plan that allowed the government to give billions of dollars of money to American businesses. They didn't do anything with that. It was just a handout. It says, here you go, guys. Here's the money you go and expand. So it's just like the government giving Microsoft money and saying, away you go, or Google, here you go, here's, here's billions and billions of dollars, just do whatever you like. And the thing that the government got on it was that as those companies developed using the money that the government gave them, so the share price went up 
This is the capital, so the share price went up. And then the government who owned the shares, they could then sell the shares and make money that way. So, a very clever system of capitalism, if you like, and a good way to create monopolies because these big companies already existed and they could create um, versions of themselves and expand into a global space. So really the Marshall Plan was the globalization of American businesses into Europe. So it was basically the takeover of Europe by the globalists. Okay. Hear the dog. Because this was the money that was used to destroy the East German camera industry and the money that was used to fight all the court case battles and everything and to delay their development so that the Japanese, who also had the same system more dog barking, the same system going into Japan like the Marshall Plan, another plan probably, <coughs> same idea. And so this is how the corporations took over the world really. And the German camera industry had to fight back and they eventually fought so well that they produced this wonderful camera, the Praktika 4, which was a camera which sold very well to ordinary people, not the ones who eat, the ones who serve. This was the camera for the ones who serve. And so that's what the East German camera industry focused on. It used to be focused on the greatest cameras in the world, the ones that you've seen so far. But their focus changed and their focus went towards the actual workers, the people who worked with cameras and the ordinary people. And so from this camera, the Praktika 4, so the East German camera industry developed the Praktika Nova, which was an even more economical version of the camera and developed their industries further and then came up with, this is an MTL3, which is a new square body shape and improved shutter design and eventually producing the other cameras that you see behind me here. And we're not going to go into all that because the other videos discuss all that. And at the end of the 1990s, the dog has to bark again because a terrible thing happened to Germany, East Germany after the war. Because the dog, because they were walking into the lion's mouth. They were about to be gobbled up by the globalists. The fruit of the Marshall Plan was about to eat them and they didn't know anything about it. They didn't know about the Marshall. They didn't know, they didn't know what happened to them really because they were in one part of the world. This was another part of the world. They were living according to different rules. People were more honest and open about what they did. They didn't kind of try to hide it um, in the form of some idealized idea of what, what it was supposed to be when in actual fact it was something completely different hidden and, and, and completely the opposite of what it was putting forward itself as. And so, so now we have to talk about what actually happened in 1990. Now I'm going to show you the camera that I showed you before because this is the state of the industry at the time.
this camera is the mid 80s, a camera from the mid 80s and it's the forefront if you like of the development of the German East German camera industry and with this camera this great really great camera the Germans East Germans at Dresden had 34% of the world market right 34% of the world market they were a successful industry and after 1990 the whole industry was shut down flogged off to Schneider Kreuznach the monopolists who just bought all the machinery equipment and at a fire sale and threw out everybody from their jobs disbanded the whole industry took the cream of what they wanted just a few hundred people and shut their industry down so that they no longer had to compete against these great cameras like the Yeniflex M1 okay and so we need to go into that in a little bit of detail because there's an assassination involved uh, which is of an equal stature to the Kennedy assassination. The J.F. Kennedy assassination in America has its equivalent in Germany. And this has only just recently come to light. And so I'm going to tell you the story of that now. <clears throat> now, if you go to the main Wikipedia article on German reunification, you'll find a whole lot of stuff, a great big article. And if you search all the words in there, you'll find there's no word there, any mention of the true hand, or the German word true hand, something or other, which was the main organization that was set up to deal with the the rights and the money and the ownership of everything in East Germany on its absorption into West Germany. It wasn't a reunification, it was an absorption. West Germany absorbed East Germany, completely engulfing it and overshadowing it, and in the end, just stealing it, really. And you'll see how that works out as we progress. <clears throat> okay, now, <clears throat> you have to understand that it's 60 years that the East Germans have lived in a socialist country. That's two entire generations, a generation is 30 years. And so all the people living in East Germany at the time were all of the descendants, if you like, of the people who lost the war. They weren't actually involved in any of that. They lived their lives completely. They were born in the GDR. They lived in the GDR and what happened was that the whole lot was absorbed into West Germany and they lost basically all of their ownership. If you imagine what should, what rightfully should happen to a, these people who really shared in the ownership of all the land, all the businesses, everything, they were shareholders in the whole country, each individual. And so they should have taken the whole country and everything in it and divided it up amongst the individual people. And this, in fact, was what they were going to do in the beginning. But I suppose when they worked out all the numbers and realized how much the people were going to get um, and how much the 
West Western greed cult was going to lose, they decided to knock that idea on the head. But anyway, the true hand was formed to work out the intricacies of this issue. And the man put in charge of it, the president of the true hand, was Detlev Karsten Rohrweder. I'll put his name up because it's such a difficult name so that you can spell it correctly if you want to research this fellow. And he was a member of the Social Democrat Party, the SPD. He was a, a chief executive officer, the CEO of Hush AG, which was a large company involved in steel production and mining operations. And he was born in Goethe in Turingen, or Turingia, in the GDR. And so, um, Apparently he was a good man and a fair man and he wanted to see fairness done. And what happened to him was he was assassinated on the 1st of April. <laughs> you see, it's like the East German April Fool's joke, if you like, that they would get rid of this man. And um, he was assassinated and the blame was tried to be put on some radical person. And that radical person who was supposedly fired the weapon, um, was shot down, murdered by the, the police, the West German police. And so nobody can actually know what happened to him. In a similar way that uh, they got rid of the supposed assassination, assassinator of J.F. Kennedy. And so there is a movie made about this. I haven't seen the movie but apparently it's on Netflix or it's available, it's called A Perfect Crime, if you want to have a look more into that. But anyway, having got rid of Detlev Karsten Rohrweder, they put in Birgit Bruhl into the position. And Birgit Bruhl was born in Hamburg. She was a Christian Democrat Union member, the CDU. Uh, Alma Mater was the University of Hamburg the University of Oxford and the University of Geneva. So she was a globalist. And she had, according to Wikipedia, in quotes, no degree. So she was awarded no degree by any of these institutions. I don't know what that means. I just noticed that whilst I was reading it. And her occupation is politician and retail merchant. And so she was the exact opposite of Detlev Carson Rohrweder. And once she got into the position of authority in charge of place, everything went smoothly and quickly. Everything was stolen. And basically the East Germans ended up with nothing. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of it. But I do know my lady is from East Germany. This is how I come to be involved in making this documentary, if you like. Her father was a very great scientist and inventor who worked for Carl Zeiss in Jena. And at the close of all this at the end of the at this time he was headhunted to try to get him to go to the west and he didn't want to go to the west and in fact what's happened he's dead now he died recently and he was never happy with what happened to east germany never happy with what happened to carl zeiss works and this imprinted upon my mind that you know, being re related to his daughter, it's my karma, if you like, to carry forward his work. And that's really what I'm doing here with all these cameras and stuff. And trying to bring truth and reconciliation to this issue in the same way that the South Africans had to come to truth and reconciliation after what happened in South Africa and the theft of everything from the blacks there. It's exactly the same situation with East Germany. Everything was stolen. And the sons of my partner, my lady, they are now wandering the earth because there's no place, there's no, no scientific East German developed industry that they could have really pursued their very high level careers in being the descendants if you like of a very great scientist engineer 
um, at Otto Schotten and Karl Zeiss. And so they had to leave East Germany and now they find themselves part of the East German diaspora, if you like, which is the same thing that happened to the Jew Jewish people. They were also a diaspora and they had to seek their fortunes in places other than Jerusalem and in the same way that the East Germans now have to seek their fortunes in somewhere other than East Germany because East Germany has basically been destroyed. And so I'll put some pictures up of the state of East Germany as I saw it as I, when I passed through it. Now, It's a tragedy what has happened to these people and it's necessary for the world to come to the truth of this for any healing to happen between the East and the West. It's not just East Germany. It's not just Germany. It's not just Europe. It's not just Asia or America or it's even Australasia. It's the entire planet needs to come to some kind of truth and reconciliation. Unless the world and the planet wants to go through the final Ragnarok, if you like, um, where everything just gets turned into one big fireball and all those people in Queenstown who have been building their underground bunkers find themselves just wiped out by a single atomic bomb and it's the end of civilization as we know it because this needs to come to an end and this needs to be talked about and discussed truthfully not by a dishonest media not by any kind of fake media owned by any fake corporation this needs to be talked and discussed by genuine real concerned people and it needs to be done publicly and it needs to be televised, it needs to be published on the internet. It needs to be like a new Nuremberg trial, if you like. And it needs to be like the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of South Africa. Anything short of that, and this thing will just go on and on, not forever, it will go on and on until Ragnarok finishes us all off. And I'll leave you on that note and a few images of the last Ragnarok that the Japanese experience.